Hello, everyone. Welcome to Schema. I am so excited to be here. I'm just going to take it in for a brief second. This is our first live event that we've had since Config 2020, which, quick show of hands, anybody with us for Config 2020? Yeah, welcome back. I'm super excited to have you back. And obviously, for everyone else, super excited that you're here. Config 2020 was really my first start at Figma. Um, I was happy enough to actually do a speech there around improving design efficiency. And previously, I was over at Atlassian, where I was managing their design systems teams as well as their design tooling teams. And it was a ton of fun just going to that conference and interacting with everyone here at Figma. Awkward story, though, I did not do my due diligence. Uh, during one of the actual speaker events that were there, I sat down, and someone sat down next to me. I was talking to them, and they were like, oh, yeah, you know, my name's Dylan. And I was like, OK, whatever. Um, and I was just talking through with this person. And finally, I was just like, so what do you do? Luckily, that foot-in-the-mouth event uh, did not prevent them from hiring me, and so I've been here for about a year and a half. Uh, now I'm actually working for them re remotely out in Seattle with my partner, my dog that's there. That's Avocado. Um, yeah, and anyway, I just want to jump into some really fun things that we're talking about for design systems. But before I do that, I want to do a flashback to Schema 2021, where Sho was talking about the history of designing for the web. And even back in 1997, some of the core tenets of design philosophies were still there that we are using today. One of those things was this importance of freeform design, this ability to design and explore things in unbounded, creative ways, to really not be hampered by all these like imposing structures. And it's really a point in time early on in your design process when you're thinking about not how do I make something, but what is it that I'm actually making? On the other side of the uh, pond is this concept of structured design, this more restrictive design that's there that's really important, especially for branding processes that are there, to make sure that we have consistent implementations of all the components and colors and spacings that we have. At Figma, the harmony between these two things has always been paramount. And even really from the beginning of Figma's origins, we've always wanted designers to be able to explore between these two worlds freely. But if we look at these things, there are complexities of them. Because at each point in that design process, you're going to want more either freeform design or structured design. And if we index too much in that freeform design, what can happen is we'll lose sight of the actual brands that we're trying to make for. Likewise, though, if we index too much into the structured design world, what ends up happening is we lose that spark of creativity that's in all of us. We lose that part of us that makes us designers. And so that's a little bit of background of where we were coming from and the background of design up until today. But now I want to talk about what design systems really look like now and what we're going to see in the future as well. Design systems today are more powerful, more flexible, and more sophisticated than they ever have been. But the other side of that is that they're also harder to maintain. This is one of the things we're really seeing as we add these things to support power and flexibility is we create a lot more things that we have to think about as design system managers. And so I want to highlight three particular areas where we are seeing design complexity increase and the ways that we at Figma are actually thinking about how to address those. One of these is layout. Layout is integral to any sort of design. But early on in any sort of design system when you're making components, layout is usually composed of a single representation of that component that's there. Later on, what happens is we get some asks from designers to support multiple versions of layouts, where we can shift the structure of them and change around the order of components inside of them. This was great for using variants inside of Figma for this. You could draw out two different versions of it, and they could easily swap between them. The problem there is what happens if you have these optional elements that are a part of this, something like an image that's a part of one of these cards. Yeah, you can do it in variants, but then you encounter this problem of variant explosion, which I'm sure for any design system manager here has had to deal with. And so we introduced this concept of component properties to really address this, to allow for these optional elements inside of components themselves. But variants and components don't always work in the way that we really want to to support all the demands of designers. 
Take, for example, these entirely different representations of what is clearly the same component. We have these cards that are here that what they do is we actually see one that's in a horizontal layout and one that's in a vertical layout. We can't easily just swap the orders of layers in order to actually support these things. We have to draw each individual one out and represent all states that designers want when we have these layouts that really vastly change. One of the ways we're seeing designers approach this is to pull out each of those individual components and represent them into a larger component that's purely dedicated to layout. This subcomponent-based approach allows you to really vary the representation of your components throughout any representation that your designer truly wants. And the cool thing about this is they will use them in ways that are absolutely unique and in ways that you as a design system manager may have never even considered. Next, I want to talk about theming. This is a hot button topic that I'm sure is on everybody's mind. When you're just starting out, though, you're just building a component without any theming at all. It has these colors just baked into it. And you also probably have a ticket somewhere in like your ticketing system of your designers or other users asking for dark mode. And so we add a dark mode at some point. We have this light and dark mode representation of each of our components. And the complexity is starting to grow. But what happens when we have multiple sub-products and brands inside of our system that all want different representations of their brand color or even other things such as border radiuses? What we're seeing is just like with layout, this complexity is growing exponentially. And likewise, so does the maintenance of it. And so one of the ways we're seeing designers actually approach this is by separating out the presentation of the actual component from the structure of that component. Esther Turan, who is one of the creators of the Figma Tokens plugin, calls these headless design systems. And I really like that term. Because this approach that's here to separate those two things out means that you can support things with infinite variety inside of different platforms, as well as different products, as well as different brands that are out there. The other nice thing that I really like about this approach is it means maintenance of these components is vastly easier as well. Whereas before, if we had three different components that were there for each of our brands inside of our system, we would have to go and update each one of those, and the maintainability was high. There was risk of error when we were duplicating those efforts over and over again. But with this kind of approach, the great thing about it is you can update that structure, and it goes ahead and rolls out to all those sub-brands that you have. The next thing I really want to talk about that's really increasing complexity here is process. And in really robust design systems, what we're seeing is that process is actually baked into the design system itself. This is an example of one of our Figma libraries that's here showing off just a little memo of how do I contribute back to this file? Because really what we're seeing is that design systems are having this issue with organizational complexity that's there. And that's not always the case. When you have a smaller organization such as this, it's really easy to talk to everyone in your org. You can just be like, hey, Bob, I want to update this component. And they're like, yeah, cool, go do it. And it's done. But what happens as you grow as a team is sometimes that design team grows fairly big, and you're not really sure what every single person is doing at any given time in that system. So updating the system creates risk. And especially at an enterprise scale, you're almost guaranteed to encounter situations where one designer will be doing something that's also what you are working on. And so we're seeing a few different ways that designers are going about trying to support the complexity that's here, because what we're seeing is just like with theming complexity and layout complexity, organizational complexity also lends to design system maintenance issues. A few of these ways that we're seeing are really implementing this concept of not test-driven development, but test-driven design. And so some cool implementations that we're actually really seeing here is this concept of having visual regression testing inside of your files themselves. There's a little fun one here where you actually like take a component, detach it, put it on top of another instance that's there, and use a blending mode to show the difference between the two. That way you can see when overrides are lost upon update. The other cool thing that we're seeing is really the embracing of branching inside of Figma. 
This is especially critical for any large design system that's out there, and a great process that we're seeing is encouraging people to branch off the design system and submit a branch that's there to be merged back in. Having those documented processes is critical to avoiding small splinter design systems from actually splitting out of your main core one. But let's step back a little bit and look at the bigger picture that's here. If we look at these things, this organizational complexity and this design system complexity are really all borrowing from a very specific area. Because design systems really sit in between both design and code. And we're only talking a lot about the design aspects of this, but the code aspects have so many things to offer. And if you look at the problems that we're encountering here, such as different components, well, if you look at the code side, they've been doing slotted components for years now. This is really just a code concept that we're borrowing on the design side. And likewise, theming, the separation of presentation and the hierarchy of the data inside of the component. HTML and CSS. There's plenty of representations of this that we've seen in code for years. And what about branching and merging, test-driven development? These are clearly code concepts. And so one of the interesting things that we're seeing is as the complexity of design actually trends towards code, what we should really be doing is looking to our counterparts on the engineering side and seeing what processes that they have to support the complexities that we're encountering in design systems today. And these ideas are very helpful, but there's always a but that's here, and there is an important caveat. At the same time as pulling these ideas in from code, we have to be careful with overdoing it in the process that's there and putting design into a box. There's a reason why we at Figma have never allowed design system managers to prevent designers from detaching from a component. It's because you should trust these designers to explore and to innovate, and we don't want to restrict that creativity that's there. Because really, the flexibility of design is what makes it design. That ability to explore, to go in and create new, exciting things that are there. And if we lock that down, we're going to lose that spark. And so there are things that are unique to design that we really should embrace. That creativity, that exploration, and even that axis of who can participate with that actual design system that we have. And there's things that we should learn from development on, things like branching and merging or test-driven de development or design. And one of the things we saw early on with the creation of design systems was design system managers would come up and say, oh, well, the purpose of a design system is to reduce the chance of designers making a mistake. And that's not what design systems should be. We should trust in our designers to explore and to really go in and dive into the brands that we have and take them to new levels. Because really the purpose of a design system is not to constrict, but it's to reduce that friction that's there so we can increase the creativity of the designers that are using them. And so with that, I want to welcome you to Schema, where we are going to be learning from some amazing industry professionals that are out there that are going to teach us how to accelerate that design creativity inside all of our teams. We have an amazing set of speakers here that I'm super excited for not only you to learn from, but also another thing that I want to keep in mind is we're here to learn from you as well. And that's why we have all these common spaces that are here, is that we can mingle and really talk to everyone that's here because you too are the industry professionals. And especially for us at Figma, we try and take the product in directions based off of the feedback from each of you. So let's listen to some amazing talks that are here, but also please, please, please come up and talk to all of us. We really want to hear your voices as well. We have an amazing schedule here today that we're really excited for. There's a bunch of amazing talks. I want to highlight a few of them in particular. We have Nathan Curtis's talk at the end of this, which is going to be diving into that complexity of subcomponents that I was talking about earlier in the talk. We also have two actual Figma speakers as well. Um, Sue and Naomi are going to be diving into the behind the scenes of component properties. So if you're curious about how we actually build features, they'll be jumping right into it. And so, Thank you from not only myself, but everyone at Figma for joining us here at Schema 2022. Thanks, y'all.